Coming up next, it's Sessions at West 54th, hosted by John Hyatt. Tonight, a tribute to the late Graham Parsons. Emmy Lou Harris and friends band together to celebrate the young visionary who first brought rock and country music together with Sheryl Crow, Steve Earle, The Mavericks, Chris Hillman, Victoria Williams, and many more. The enduring songs of Graham Parsons and his story told to John Hyatt. Up next on Sessions at West 54th. For a man who only lived to be 26, Graham Parsons left behind an enormous legacy in song. He practically invented what we call country rock, though he didn't like that term. He preferred to call his music Cosmic American. Through his work with the Birds, the Flying Burrito Brothers, and his two solo albums, he has influenced a generation of artists, some of whom are with us tonight to pay tribute to the man and his music. Return of the Grievous Angel is the title of the tribute album to Graham Parsons, and in discovering these new versions of his songs, we hope you'll be inspired to revisit his originals. Graham's collaborator and soulmate, Emmy Lou Harris, oversaw this project with all the tender, loving care it deserves. Joined now by Ryan Adams of Whiskey Town to sing the title song, won't you please welcome Emmy Lou Harris.
here tonight and um, also he gave me this shirt which I feel more dressed like everybody else now I want to thank everybody for coming out and uh, I want to introduce a couple of very special people now there's well, one gentleman that without his participation there's no way I could have proceeded with with doing the uh, the tribute record and certainly we we're very pleased to, to have him here tonight because he was really connected <clears throat> at the hip with Graham Parsons both as a friend as a songwriter as a band member and uh, partners in crime and other things and uh, it's, a, it's a real delight to welcome Chris Hillman Joining him on this next song is uh, one of my, just about my favorite people in the whole world, one of my neighbors in Nashville, Mr. Steve Earle.
walking over here that we're, we're actually taping this show, this interview on like, the 26th anniversary of uh, Grant Parsons' death. Yeah. death. And uh, this you, is pretty vibey. As you say, there are no accidents. When they told me um, the date, and I went, hmm, yes, I remember that date. But I suppose this is a, a good thing to be doing on the anniversary. Think, it has yeah. to be celebrating his life and his music. You've borrowed uh, the name of one of his songs well, for the uh, title of this album. Right. Well, uh, Return of the Grievous Angel was actually supposed to be the name of Graham's record. And then he died. And <laughs> I don't know who made the decision that, that Grievous Angel uh, was was should be the title of the record. But when I started seriously thinking about this project, I realized that in this particular instance, it's not so much a tribute record uh, as it is an introduction mm -hmm. to Graham's music, because outside of musicians and people who write about music, especially in America, people don't have a clue who Graham Parsons is. He's pretty well known uh, overseas, um, but in America, I'm trying to think the last time I heard Graham Parsons it's, on the radio. Yeah. And and so I, I'm hoping that this record will um, get people interested. I want you to please welcome Gillian Welch and David Rawlings doing a beautiful version of Hickory Wind. Trouble
Our next artist is actually a group, and they are very aptly named because they go their own way and they don't let anybody tell them what to do. Please welcome the Mavericks.
let's talk about some of the songs and 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 some of the. I want to start with some artists that you might not have thought uh, would have wound up on a Graham Parsons uh, tribute album. And uh, the first one that comes to mind is uh, the duet you do with Beck. Right. Which <laughs> I, I knew you were going to say I just that. thought it was so great. I was so delighted with that when we got in the studio, and he was, he did an even more traditional version of Sin City. You know, he. He's creative. He decided to be creative by sort of going, I don't want to say backwards, but you know, going the more traditional route. Right. Uh, and, and just, you could see all the influences that he's listened to. We couldn't get everybody from the album for the show because of their availability, so people are doubling up and doing their versions of other people's versions of Graham's songs. So uh, uh, Gillian and Steve are going to do the duet on on Sin City, which I just love yeah. the arrangement. They put accordion on it, and uh, it's, it's going to be great. This old town, they'll sin, it'll swallow. If you got some money to burn, take it home. By the way, you got priests to pay, but Satan is waiting his turn. Oh, 
you know, we've been talking about some of the artists that, that were able to appear today, mm -hmm. and we've got quite a lineup. Right. Um, there's a band uh, on the record, Wilco, I right. think they do the song 100 Years 100 From Now, years which from I now. love that song. Yeah. And they really kind of jacked it up, didn't they? Oh, they really did. And uh, I'm sorry that they, they uh, their schedule, they were not able to, to come today to perform, but I know that they, soon I think they're, they're going to be doing sessions, and uh, I really hope that they do that song, because I would love to, to, to be able to see a live performance yeah. of them doing, doing that song. Yeah. It's amazing the the connection, how deep it is with 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 both of you. Did you have that sense of you know if I hang around this guy much longer, he's too dangerous almost to to be with? Do you know what I mean? I saw that coming and I backed away from it and I said this isn't this isn't right. And I had a sense. There's a great story of me having to find him one day to do a, a gig and he was hanging out with the Stones and I had to go find him in a session that they were doing in LA and I'll never forget Mick Jagger lecturing Graham Graham's on the floor and he's going you get up you have a show to do you have an audience you're responsible to this is 1969 1970 wow. get in a car with Hillman and get moving and we're busy we're working here ultimately it was a waste of not only a very talented you know, gifted human being, but a, a very beautiful, generous, sweet, very loving soul. But do you think it's also fair to say that it's it's not it's not a a, a, a moral failing of, oh, no, of, no. of the man? No, it's 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 a disease. I mean, it's a disease. A disease. It's, a, it's an addictive, compulsive behavior. It's somewhat genetic, I think. I don't think you could have done anything. I don't think I could have done anything at the time. Well, you, know. you, you never know. I mean, I, sometimes I think, well, maybe I could have bought him a little more time. Maybe, but... But, um, you know, he... The, unfortunately for Graham, I think he tried to 
get clean. And um, I think Graham's case, I think he was sobering up, but he ran into one person who brought back the old habits, and all it took was one incident, and one he was time. gone. Yeah. Please welcome the fearless Cheryl Crow. So, Chris, you and Graham were, were playing together in the Flying Burrito Brothers. You were in town. Is that is that how you heard Emmy the first time? Or? Um, I'll well, tell you what. Well, story about how, I have to interject here, because this, didn't you and Graham meet in a bank? I was in the Birds, 1967, and I hear this new kids in town singing country music. Now, we had sort of flirted with country music in the Birds. We did Satisfied Mine, the old... Porter Wagner song. Right. We did uh, a couple of things I had written and used Clarence White to come in the first time we'd use an outside musician. So I hear this new guy's in town, Graham Parsons, and he's got this band, the International Submarine Band. And we had the same manager, but I didn't know this kid. So I'm in the bank one day, and along comes this guy, you know, real young and good looking kid, long brown hair, and we hook up and start talking. And Graham says, I can play keyboards and, you know, let me try out. And he comes in and, uh, and it worked out good. You know, we hired him for a while. Who had just left the birds and vacated that, that seat? That's when we fired Crosby, I think. Oh. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> That's when David... We couldn't get arrested after David, that, David unfortunately. David had uh, higher, uh, yeah, exactly, higher uh, aspirations with the uh, stills at the time. I, I think you need to know who this band is. Over here playing bass, but he's also the fantastic multi-instrumentalist, artist, songwriter, fabulous Buddy Miller.
on pedal steel and lead guitar. This is just a wonderful instrumentalist, Greg Lees. And back here on the drums, you, you wouldn't know it, but he also plays just about every instrument in the world, too. And he's a drummer, and he's a, one of those left brain, right brain prodigies. Ethan John. <laughs> and back here on keyboard and accordion, we, we stole him uh, for a short while from Paul McCartney. This is Wix. Of course, very, very special guests working in this band, especially for this, uh, this event tonight. Uh, you probably know him from the Flying Burrito Brothers and the Eagles, among other things. This is Bernie Ledden. <laughs> it's, uh, it's great to get Chris Hillman back out here and joining him for, for this next song, which is probably the most righteous shuffle of all time, is a fantastic singer and songwriter, Jim Lauderdale. <laughs> Do you think it's fair to say that, that Graham Parsons invented a certain kind of American music? And I hate to call it country rock. I know he hated yeah, he that hated term. It. We, we all hate it. it. Don't we all hate yeah, that Don't term? we all hate that? Okay, country good. Rock. But I loved his, his term, cosmic American music. Mm -hmm. I, I like that. I think he, brought, he just decided there were no rules. And that's why I'm saying he's taking a little out of R&B. He's yeah. taking a little out of gospel, black and white, and doing what he felt worked. And so, yeah, he was an innovator in that yeah. sense and not set in this rigid uh, tunnel vision on music. I think music 
originally it comes from sort of ethnic, social, and cultural places. Country music spoke for a certain social structure and uh, cultural things at, at one point. What does it speak to now, or what does the blues speak to now? I mean, we all have a lot of common experiences, and, and everybody listens to all different kinds of music. So what we want, basically, is music that speaks to the heart and the soul, and so we have to change the rules. And Graham was not afraid to change the rules. Right. And he could sing R&B, he could sing, but he sang it as Graham. He sang mm -hmm. it... He didn't try to sing it as an R&B. He sang it as a country singer because that was no, his. No, he didn't. He didn't do the white boy sings the blues. Right. It wasn't about stylization. No, no. He, he had the white man's blues. Everybody sings the blues in their own way, and that's all. Well, I'm going to interject something totally foreign here. Towns Van Zant. Towns Van Zant said there are two kinds of music. There's the blues, and there's zippity doo dah. <laughs> I like that. That's and I think good. Graham would have mm -hmm. agreed yeah. with that.
been a great audience. Thank you so much. And to bring us to the end of this very lovely evening, please welcome Victoria Williams.
Next week on Sessions, it's jazz great Branford Marsalis, plus the beautiful and exotic sounds of Cesaria Evora. Next week on Sessions at West 54th. Don't forget to check out the Sessions website, sessions54.com.